Hey guys, welcome back to Saving Green. This is part two of a series discussing lawnmowers, efficiency, and the cost-benefit analysis of switching from a gas mower to an electric. So if you want to crunch the numbers for yourself, stay tuned. Hey guys, thank you so much again for checking out Saving Green, your stop for sustainability on a budget. In the last video, we talked a little bit about the environmental impacts of lawn equipment and why a battery-powered lawnmower may be more environmentally friendly. But the question is, is it financially sustainable? Here at Saving Green, we want to look at the value not only in being more environmentally conscious, but also understanding the bottom line and the impact to your wallet. So to help answer that question, I created a little Excel spreadsheet that kind of goes through some of the parameters that you can adjust for your own situation to run the numbers for yourself. Let's take a look. So this is an overview of the Saving Green Lawn Cost Comparison Tool. And this fancy little device makes some assumptions, and I'll go over those briefly. And it allows you to enter in your own specific criteria to determine whether or not it makes financial sense to go from gasoline to electric. So with regards to your lawnmower specifically, there are a few things that I assumed. One is that you're going to replace your oil for your gas-powered equipment about once a year. You're gonna replace blades for all mowers every couple years. And you can estimate your battery power based on the adjusted Ohm's law calculation, which gives you a immediate apples to apples comparison of how many kilowatt hours it takes to charge and run your mower. And that will give you a financial equivalent based on your home utility rates. So this website here kind of looked at the carbon footprint of utility companies and different power plants. And the bottom line is that it gives you an estimate of what your carbon impact is per kilowatt hour. And for ease of use, I just used 1.0, even though you can see the value here kind of fluctuates a little bit. In Florida, maybe a little bit higher, but nonetheless, you know, I think it's a good estimate and a good place to start in terms of your assumptions. And in the previous video, I also discussed about the nitrogen oxide and carbon monoxide output and that is the equivalent of about 160 miles for a typical car per every hour of use. So how do you navigate this particular document? Well, basically, the things that you need to adjust for yourself are in the green boxes. So you can see here that you have your yard size, your dollars per gallon of unlimited gasoline, your dollars per kilowatt hour based on your own utility rates, how many mows you use per month, and how many minutes it takes you to mow your lawn. Now, if you use the basic assumptions here, you really don't have to do much other than adjusting those parameters. I know that I get about four mows of my quarter acre lawn every time I need to fill up my gas tank. I also know that I need to basically charge my battery every time I mow. So in my situation here, I basically had this mows per charge or mows per refill as these values here and what that does is that gives you an estimated how many acres per gallon or acres per kilowatt hour per mower. So for example for your standard four stroke it has about a one quart capacity. Same thing with the powered mower. A seated mower might be four, six, eight times that so we can just basically say it takes about a gallon um, to fill that bad boy. And in our particular situation, this uses about 0.27 kilowatt hours per charge. Now we calculated this as an estimate by knowing that we have a 56 volt battery. We have a five amp hour capacity. That's 280 watt hours or 0.28 kilowatt hours. And because we get one charge per mo, it actually worked out pretty easy. We also measured this directly with the voltimeter and we found that it took 0.27 kilowatt hours to charge the battery fully, which is within the margin of error and basically right in line with estimates showing the efficiency of this particular battery, where you're almost like getting a one-to-one -one in terms of what the power estimate is and what it's actually measuring and drawing from our utility grid. So because we're able to get one mo for every battery charge at 0.27 kilowatt hours. If we think about a quarter acre lawn, that estimates about 0.93 acres per kilowatt, multiplying all those values by four. That's how that part of this sheet should be used. Now, I also just ran those numbers to determine how many dollars per mo, estimating a cost per acre and a cost per year, again, based on three mows per month. If we update this to four, 
we see that these values change. We go up to 690 for the push mower, 920 for the power, and 2760 for the ride, and only $1.56 for the electric. Now each of these mowers represents the approximate efficiency of each device, knowing that the power mower is going to be a little less efficient than your push mower. Now our electric mower does not have a push capacity. The newer models of the mower that have that forward momentum would probably be a little bit less efficient. I also wanted to include maintenance costs. So if you assume a $30 blade, this may be different for the mower that you use. You have to replace it every 24 mounts. That's a $15 per year annualized rate. Cost for oil, $7.95 for you know a one year at 18 ounces for your typical push mower. Going down, you can see the adjustments for your ride along. The cost to change a spark plug may be 15 bucks every year. Now, if you hire someone to do it, that may be different. It may be 75 bucks, but that may be every two years, for example. And that will change the overall costs of how these things will look. And you can see in real time, the document adjusts. Now, battery cost is probably the biggest factor here. So our battery for our mower is expensive. It's $250. Now, if we get 10 years of use out of it, that's only $25 a year, not too shabby. That's only a three year warranty. We may not get 10 years and most likely efficiency will drop every year. But because we haven't noticed any efficiency loss in two years, I didn't incorporate that into our calculation. But let's say just for efficiency's sake, let's say that we get you know, about six years, okay? So 72 months per, per use. That will give us a total operating cost of $58.22 for our electric mower. If we compare that to the push, it may be $70 a year. For the power mower, 74. For the ride along, 98. Now in terms of pollution output, again, you have to look at the runtime or how many hours per week or how many hours per mo it takes you to use this equipment. And using the parameters here, the runtime for a push mower may be 16 hours of use per gallon, a little bit less for the power mower, a lot less for the ride along, and actually a lot less per kilowatt hour for the electric. Now, how many acres per hour? Again, this is based on these efficiency values, and this is at basically 48 hours per year. Now that's because we're mowing four times per month. If we drop this down to three, all these values change. This drops to 36 hours, as you can see. It does give you an estimate of how many car miles equivalents this equates to. So at three mows per month, running at a 16 hour per gallon, you're looking at 5760 in terms of miles driven. And the carbon footprint, that's about 40 pounds of CO2 for the push about 53 for the powered, about 159 for the ride along, and only 9.7 for the electric. So now the question is, what's the break even point? How long will it take for you to make your money back if you go electric? Well, assuming that a typical mower may be anywhere between 200 and 250 dollars, add another 50 to 75 dollars if you want it to be powered, um, you're looking at maybe between 250 and 300 dollars for a good quality gasoline powered mower. Now, you may find that less, it may be more expensive in your area. You can adjust this to whatever makes sense for you. Now, our mower is $399. It's the older generation of the Eco 56 volt. They now offer a larger 7.5 amp hour capacity and they offer power versions with lights and things like that. Great. If you want that, look into it and see if it makes sense to pay for those options. Now, in this situation, let's just make estimates simple. Using the operating cost of $72.35 for a powered mower versus $57 per year for the electric mower, at these prices, it would take 6.89 years to pay this off. Now let's say for example, that instead of six years of battery, we only get three years. Then our annual costs go up to $99 per year adjusted and it will take negative 3.6. In other words, you will never pay it off at these rates. So for that reason, there's a lot of variables and a lot of questions that may not be answered today, but this document should give you a running head start to figure out overall efficiency and the cost value of switching to electric. So I hope this again was helpful for you. At the link below this page, you will have access to this document and you can download it. And please comment and let me know if this 
you feel like I should make changes and I will try to update this for you, or feel free to update it yourself with your own calculations and your own parameters. But again, this was just a way to get a good estimate and get a foothold on why I think not only from an environmental and health standpoint, it makes sense to go electric with your lawnmower, but financially, it also makes sense as well. Please subscribe to our channel if you want to learn other ways to be more sustainable on a budget. In the next video, I'll talk a little bit about our two-stroke equipment and why I went with that instead of Ego. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.